In the spring of 2015, before any signs of the coming thaw had begun to melt the snow and ice on College Hill, a band of four unlikely visitors wandered onto the campus of Geneva College in western Pennsylvania. They were reported to be rough and rugged and savagely educated. They came from Tahiti, Long Island, Zimbabwe, and Pittsburgh. The Dynasty Gang, as they would come to be called, was led by Ian Miller, son of legendary missionary Dr. Eric Miller, creator of the Judeo-Christian martial art of Dentium Prolium, a physical pacification technique created in the hills of Rarotonga. Miller adopted his father's techniques and modified them into a fighting style utilizing music and literature. In the summer of 2014, Miller began to select the chief officers of his rebellion. He found Zachary Bowman in a Nevada prison serving a life sentence for passion. He helped him escape by inventing a musical note that could liquefy metal. The two found Emma Lamberton and Amber Kreitzberg in New York City writing ransom notes for hire. In August of that year, Miller declared that Dynasty would be their name. At the very least, we will destroy you, Miller said. At most, we will change you. And it will be with a pen, and it will be with a song. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. In the spring of 2015, a group of writers and musicians arrive at a small college in western Pennsylvania. There they begin a revolution of word and music in the middle of winter that caused the President of the United States to declare a state of emergency. Dynasty arrives. The first day, 100 students join them in the square. Remember, it is 10 below. The second day, a thousand students join them. The third and fourth, the entire campus. The students and professors who died from exposure, close to 100, they were lifted up. They were carried in marches all over campus as symbols of resolve. This is the raw energy of dynasty. It is what Miller called lightning strike renaissance. What started it? A group of four missionary children carrying instruments fashioned out of trees and mud. Barefoot, frostbitten, they started a renaissance. This is improbable, and it is absolutely true. In Australia, we have a saying, <clears throat> you can't flick a flea flat out like a lizard drinking. It means those who lose dreaming are lost. It was the dreams of dynasty, the, the dynasty we've come to love, to fear. Ian Miller, <laughs> Zach Bowman, Emmer Lamberton, Amber Kreitzberg. It was their dreams that led to action, atrocities, beautiful atrocities of sight and sound and word. They first came to campus in the winter of 2015. At that point, Geneva was in the middle of an endless winter, what, what we in Australia call a winter as cross as a frog in a sock. The professors were numb. The Joeys and Kindies were burning copies of Les Mis just to keep warm. Not a full quit, of course, but there had never been a winter like this, and never since. Then comes Dynasty, with their passion, their poetry, their stories. Miller and Bowman carved guitars out of icy mud. Lamberton wrote essays on the backs of frozen crows. In Kreitzberg, <laughs> she went walkabout to stir up the student wowsers and whoop whoops and scare them into reading. She terrified them. The aboriginal name for Kreitzberg is Nanga Manmai, the ghost of dreams. Amber Kreitzberg writes, I went to Geneva because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. This is not a casual theory of knowledge. It certainly isn't Hume's guillotine. She asked none to follow in her footsteps. There are no traces of ought to do in Kreitzberg cosmology. She was 
a revolutionary. She was a rogue and a rebel. She called herself an objectivist skeptic in Augustine's clothing. I call her theories the rock and roll of epistemology. What I love about Dynasty was their fearlessness, unflinching fearlessness. Emma Lamberton said, literature can wake a world in the hearts of the untethered. She walked into the middle of Geneva's campus, holding only a copy of her father's letters, and she read, 80 hours in the snow. Four students died listening to her. This is the hunger for literature that made Dynasty possible. Lamberton often said that she could lead the world to the ocean floor by the song of words. She was a dynamo. She was Dickinson meets Stanton meets Annie Oakley. There's a famous story, likely apocryphal as many great stories are, in which Lamberton is faced with a naysayer. She's challenged to write without paper, without a pen. Remember, this is the outset of the revolution. It could have ended here. Emma turned with characteristic flair and said, I will write anthems in memory of you. I will use your blood for ink. This is exactly what she did. Literally, it was murder. But figuratively, it was dynasty. Well, in, in my experience, and, and uh, I was writing choral music when I was three years old, uh, there's a tendency towards an intensity of action in the musical mind that, that borders on regions of the surreal. What you have to remember is that Ian Miller, leader of the dynasties and genius, absolute genius, he never once declared any of his activities to be gang-related. Never once. Though they were. Of course they were. He defined musical gang culture and the genre. I remember when I first heard of him. I was two years old. I was reading Bede's Ecclesiastical History of the English People in, in the original Anglo-Saxon. And I stumbled upon this quote by Miller, uh, the first I ever read of him. Quote, music is a moral law. It gives soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and charm and gaiety to life and everything." Unquote. It was my first taste of musica amare, the love of music. Ian Miller and Zach Bowman, those self-proclaimed militant pacifists of song, they devastated a campus. There can be no doubt, they devastated it with love, musica, amare. And Geneva was never the same.